of all the different books. I'm never going to reach for this type of book first. Hey guys, my name is Steve. This is Heron's Corner. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're talking about White Teeth by Zadie Smith and some of my thoughts and feelings about it. Yes, I finally read this book, which is on everyone's like top list of books that you need to read and stuff like that. Especially when when it comes to Black British books, this is like the book that's up there. You always hear about Zadie Smith, and I finally read it. I feel very happy about myself with that. But did I enjoy it? Mm, mm -hmm. That's the million dollar question, and I'm going to talk about that um in this video. So please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. It is Heron's Corner. Um, but yeah, let's get into my thoughts and feelings about white teeth because I have many. So just to give a brief summary of white teeth, just in case if you haven't read it, we are following three different families. So we're following following the Joneses, the Iqbal's, and the Chalfens, and we'll kind of see how these families um kind of like converge and kind of merge together we're dealing with like the themes of race identity immigration multiculturalism class um some gender politics post-colonialism at the heart of the novel is basically just the entanglement between these three different families whether it's romantic whether it's um platonic whether it's kind of just like circumstantial just we just see how all their storylines kind of interwoven and entangle and all, all those things i hope that makes sense because i can't really give a better summary than that it kind of feels like there's camera following these three different families and it's slightly absurdist slightly hysterical and just very human I'll say that let's say that so after finishing white teeth and enjoying it but not absolutely loving it i went to look at the reviews and the reviews kind of all said the same thing you're know, praising zadie smith of the ambition of this debut novel and that is certainly a praise i can get behind like i cannot believe that white teeth is a debut novel absolutely amazing like already like get your flowers because what the hell the writing is very visceral um zadie smith definitely knows how to like tell a um compelling narrative um the commentary is very sharp the humor is very sharp and very apt the characters feel lived and breathed in and um they were very entertaining to read but why didn't i still like completely like just love this book um i found one of the most prominent criticisms of this book um while i was like reading all the you know reviews and stuff um by james wood and this was written in the same year it came out 2000 like it kind of gave my criticisms a bit more focus because i saw my criticisms kind of reflected and my thoughts and feelings reflected on what james wood was saying so i think i'll start off my thoughts and feelings by saying that i hate charles dickens and i feel like if you read white teeth and if you read charles dickens you kind of know what i'm going to say when i say that point the story can just be from a to b and charles dickens likes us likes to take us through all the alleyways all the tunnels all the underground train stations and then we get to be i'm a very impatient reader so i if if a story can be told from a to b please just tell it from a to b unless there's going to be very interesting things happening in the alleyways and in the tunnels and in the underground train stations what does this have to do with white teeth <laughs> I found this book to be very dense and very excessive, very much you can cut the fat off a lot of this and you'll still have the same plot. But dissimilar to my experiences with Dickens, I actually enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed some of the meandering. I enjoyed how deep and intricate Zadie Smith got with these characters. But it did get exhausting, it got tiring, and I will say right off the bat that the second half of this book is not as well written as the first half of this book. Um, I feel like the meanderings get a bit annoying, it gets a bit tedious, it gets a bit okay, but do you really have to be expounding upon and expanding on everything? Like, it just was a bit much. I think of the second half of a book, it just felt like character and heart 
was being sacrificed for all those meanderings and Volva very much well written and Volva it was very entertaining like some parts it did feel like those are sacrifice being made you can write well and you can write interesting things and you can write you know compelling things but that doesn't mean that it's it, it, you have to write it <laughs> you can weave lovely social commentary in and the social commentary is like very apt doesn't mean you have to do you know what i mean like i just felt like towards the second half of this book like you can cut down this book by 100 pages and you'll still have the same story books don't have to be concise books can meander books can explore and do all these things but like for me that's not what i love that's when i read a book i don't love that it's doing that like i can enjoy it i can i can appreciate it but that's not what's going to make me love this book let's get into the characters of this book because while i i would stand by my play when i said i feel a bit the fleshed out the real people um they feel lived and breathed in do you know what i mean i still would call these characters static i would almost compare these characters to chess pieces to pawns and how the pawn can only move forward on the chessboard and i feel like these characters were moving forward along with the narrative but you need characters to change to to kind of like feel affected by what's going on and you know what i mean i wouldn't call them character creatures um james wood kind of alluded to the characters being caricatures but i wouldn't go as far as to say that i would just say that they are very fleshly developed and then like th there was more developing to be done this is why the second half kind of i have problems more so with the second half of with this book than the first half because the first half of this book you have these lovely colorful vivid real people that you that you hate and you both don't hate um it's like zadie smith makes me feel like so many different things towards these characters so you have these really lovely characters and like stuff happens in the second half of the book it's kind of like these characters don't change don't reflect don't do anything especially i would say like the two main characters like from the start which is archibald jones and samad iqbal you get a lot of depth and insight into these characters and then it just feels like in the second half are kind of like one trick ponies of characterization um, especially archibald oh my gosh he was so annoying because his characteristic was just kind of like he can never make a decision he, he's just like indecisive and he's just like all over the place and like that matched with the meandering nurse of zadie smith's writing was just so impossible to get through like <laughs> if you've read white teeth when he's talking about the bus ticket lord almighty <laughs> oh why is it it's like it was like towards the end of a book i'm like i have to get through this but can we please archie archie stop archie stop i am not against unlikable characters but i feel like there's a difference between like unlikable and like annoying i feel like annoying characters is like is kind of in a different league to like unlikable characters because annoying characters just makes it uh it makes it a struggle to get through the book and i feel like towards the end of the book we're just dealing with annoying characters there, there's a lot of casualties in the second half of this book let's just say like for irie i feel sorry for her but she did have a marvelous scene and it was so funny because i was reading her rant and um and it was kind of like my criticisms of the book kind of summed up kind of so i'll just read it to you very quickly i'll put 20 quid down now the summit is the only person in here who knows the inside bloody leg measurements of his great-grandfather and you know why they don't know because it doesn't matter as far as they're concerned it's the past this is why it's like in other families they're not self-indulgent they don't run around relishing relishing the fact that they are utterly dysfunctional they don't spend their life trying to find ways to make their lives even more complex they just get on with it and that was <laughs> that's what i was like screaming at this book sometimes i was like can you just get on with it i do want to bring in some of james's criticisms here because i feel like it does really um say what i was feeling while reading this book and yt felt just like 
pages and paragraphs of the author's imagination which is very different to the story to the characters that we are actually following and it kind of it feels like you know demonstrations of imagination and as like ivy says says in that rant like relishing and making the lives more complex you know i mean zadie smith wrote that rant so i'm going to believe that she understands what she was doing like in the book like you know with all of its embellishment and it was more so just a personal taste for me that i did not enjoy that james wood says his criticism an excess of storytelling has become the contemporary way of shrouding in majesty a lack and he um says that the lack is human humanity um in the story in the characters and where i would kind of um delineate delineate from james wood is that i don't believe there's a lack of humanity in zadie smith's story or in the characters and it's really because of that humanity i push through all the excess of story what i found was a lack of connecting me to those characters because all of those excess in storytelling and the demonstrations of imagination it kind of felt like it was kind of blocking me from just getting to the heart of the characters and the heart of the story it just felt like it was um obscuring that connection and it was frustrating because i could see all of this beautiful humanity that zadie smith was writing about and um exploring and then there will just be a page of whatever the hell that didn't even matter to be very blunt and it kind of just severed the connection but this book really does feel like the only Dickensian novel that I will read on my own volition <laughs> in a sense that I really got through this book because Zadie Smith's wonderful exploration of multiculturalism after World War II so that sense of the heart of the book was really compelling but also it's dickensian and i don't like charles dickens so i'm never going to fall in love head over heels with a book like white teeth because it's just not of my personal taste heightened sense of reality of humanity of all the nitty gritty intricacies and nuances that come with being human is amazing until it's exhausting this wasn't really a review of white teeth because if i was going to review white teeth it would be raving it would be glowing it would be read this book right now but i really wanted to focus on my challenges while reading white teeth and what that challenge was like identifying that challenge and um really like james wood's criticism even though i did i don't agree with it wholeheartedly really uh helped me identify what my gripes were of this book were and why i can't say it's like the best book of the 21st century um but it's really good it's really good. if you have not read white teeth i would say read it so please let me know down below if you've read white teeth what your thoughts and feelings were if you're thinking about reading white teeth what you think about my thoughts about its meanderingness and the kensianness of this book what do you think about that like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys soon in another video soon bye